This video is about the Network tab, a feature that you find in the developer tools of your favorite browser by clicking right click and inspect. Or you just press Command Option I and then clicking on the Network tab. I use a Chrome based browser, but you can find the same in Safari or Firefox. And a lot of people don't use the developer tools, but this is a mistake because they can not only help you find problems so much faster, but also can give you a great understanding about what's actually going on. So today we both take a quick deep dive into the network tab, what it can do and what you need to be aware of, because there's some traps, but you will see that. So let's get started. So you open the developer tools and got to the network tab, as I explained to you, and you see nothing. So there's probably already the first mistake. You don't see anything. Why? Because you need to refresh and then you see something and probably you get overwhelmed. You see, this is a so simple web page, just example.com, but there's so much here. And that is the second mistake. You need to disable your plugins, your extensions in your browser, deactivate them or go to incognito tab or, or go into a different browser where you don't have all the extensions installed and reload again. And then we go from something like this to something like this. So pretty, pretty simple and clean. But I totally understand if you're still a bit overwhelmed because just the general structure of this network tab is packed full of buttons and things to not understand in the first place. So let's get started with very easily understanding what's going on here. So if we refresh, we see something is coming in. So we have here kind of a list of requests or a list of content that is just getting fetched. So one row is just showing us what is going to be fetched. This is the website here, the document. You see the type document, you see the status code. If you wonder what the status code is, here's the explanation. And then we see just some simple information like size and time. And that's one row. And you will see, this is a simple example, but in a more real world example, as we see in a few minutes, it will be a lot of rows here. Then on the top here, we can do some sort of stuff. We can stop the recording, we can clear the results. Then if we go with command R for refreshing, we see it's loading again. We can do some sort of settings here and then I will get to them in a minute, of course. And then we can filter like the list we are getting here. So for example, I only want to see documents. So nothing will change because this is a document. If I only want to see JavaScript files, I see nothing because there's no JavaScript loaded here. We can filter that here with regular expressions. If you want to see what irregular expressions are and how they work, video is up here. And then we have a very nice settings button here, which we can then toggle some functionalities in here. And I like to activate big request rows because that makes just one row bigger and kind of feels more intuitive then. Then we can toggle that overview here. So it's a time-based graph where we see when is what fetched and what is coming into the browser. So that's pretty useful. So I wouldn't suggest you to deactivate that, but we will talk about that in a minute as well. And then we can group by frame or use screenshots, which is as well a great feature to see what is coming in when. So now we can close that and actually take a look at one row. So this is one row and we see we got more information and I like to close that here because there's a lot of information that you don't need and just accept it is like that. And then you have headers, preview, response, initiator and timing. Headers is pretty simple, just some information about what is going on here. So this is a document loaded from a server. So we see the request URL, we see what status code it has. It has not modified here. And we can of course see the method that is used to get this. Then we have some response and request headers. So if you don't know what that is, a client sends a request to the server and a server responds us with a response. So response is what you get, request is what you have sent. So you try to get something in the request and you got something in the response. And here you can see useful information, for example, about caching, which is pretty, pretty great because a lot of web applications nowadays use more and more caching, for example, in Next.js. So we can control cache headers in here and see if our caching is actually working. Then we have the preview is pretty simple, just a preview of what we got. And then we have a response, which is just the HTML code behind the preview. And here we got also some stylings in here. Then we have initiator. This is not so important here right now. It's basically about what initiates the resource to be here. And then we have timing. Timing is great to understand bottlenecks, possible bottlenecks. So when you have kind of like a laggy application, you have to take a look in the timing frame because here you see what takes how much time. It can get quite complex in here, but here, for example, the only thing that is taking a long time is waiting for a survey response. And that is usually a normal thing, so no problem here. Okay, okay, but I have to be honest with you here now. That was not a real world use case, right? It's just a example.com website. So let's go to my repository, for example. And in my repository, things are a little bit more complex. Let's just quickly set this to the bottom. So we have the same overlay, refresh, reload, and 
here we get some more information to deal with. So when deactivating with the filtering, we see we have 76 requests. And this line that you see here on the bottom is very, very useful because you not only see how many requests, you also see how many data is transferred, how many megabytes of resources you have, because having too much resources tends to slow your application and 1.6 megabytes is not good. So I definitely need to improve here. And then we see useful information like when is the DOM content loaded and yeah, just when some events have fired. So here, this is a little bit overwhelming. And I understand that totally, but we can filter them. So we see, for example, only fetch requests. And this is the images. We see them here in the kind of playful text stack Thing globe here and then we have the document which is yeah just the website so if you go into the preview here then we see the preview of the website and it's looking totally ugly because styling is not getting attached here but we see the response with all the content in here we see what initiates what so the fonts for example and we see the timing which is very very great information here and that's basically how you use the network tool you go through things and understand what is happening when why is what happening when and you see this nice thing here. You can use these bars here on the left side to indicate when you want to see anything. When you see that I take the right bar and drag it over to 100 milliseconds and go to all, we see just the document. But if we go over to 200 milliseconds, we see all the scripts have loaded. And so we can understand how is our web app actually working and how can we improve that. And very useful for doing that is to throttle the application. So to say, okay, this is now just a 3G device, for example, a mobile phone. And refreshing here, you see we're here at 500 milliseconds, but when I refresh here now, you see we are at 4,000, four, even 4,500 milliseconds. So things take longer and we see how things behave then. A very useful tip as well is to disable cache because caching can completely make you misunderstanding what's going on because it's hitting the cache and usually you don't want that. So disable it and you have no problems with it. Don't do the common mistakes of not refreshing or having extensions enabled, which is like overbloating everything. Remember having caching disabled if you want to test without caching and don't ignore the waterfall in here because it can get pretty interesting. And of course, make use of the network throttling. It is great. Thank you for watching this video. Look at my last video, which is about the fastest way to get an auth system working in Next.js. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.